So the first three quarters of my review of Scream 2022 will be entirely spoiler free. Then toward the end of the video, I'll dive into spoiler E territory. I'm not going to tell you who lives or dies or ruin the end or anything like that, but there are a couple of things I want to touch upon in a more in-depth manner. I will let you know when the spoilery section is about to begin in case you want to bail at that point. But again, the spoilery stuff shouldn't ruin anything for you in case you do decide to stick around. Welcome to Woodsboro, California, infamous for being home field to the events that inspired the long-running Stab franchise. Here every so often a maniac decides to put on a ghost face mask and start killing their friends. And it's happening again. Only this time, something is different. All the suspects have one thing in common that ties them back to key players from the first film. But will there be anyone left to figure out the horrible truth before Ghostface ghosts them all? So I have to admit, when I first heard that there was a new Scream movie in the works, my reaction was... meh. But when I discovered that the folks behind the new Scream were part of the filmmaking collective known as Radio Silence, the same team who brought us Ready or Not, I went from meh to what? Ready or Not was a total blast. I also felt like enough time had passed since the last Scream movie, and a fresh set of eyes on the project was exactly what this series needed. Now, I love and revere Wes Craven, but the Scream sequels just kind of got worse and worse, I thought. Where does Scream 2022 stand among the other Scream movies? Right up there, I'd say. As a matter of fact, it's my favorite sequel. Or is it a requel? I don't know. I just know I liked it. One of my big concerns with the new Scream was the inclusion of the legacy characters and how big a role they'd play. I love Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, and David Arquette, and the characters that they made famous from the previous films, but an injection of new blood was long overdue. For the most part, Sidney, Gale, and Dewey are background players here. In all honesty, the movie would have worked just as well without them, or at least without two-thirds of them. The focus here is on Sam, played by Melissa Barrera, her sister Tara, and her group of friends, because, as we're reminded by Dewey, the killer is always a member of the friend group. Barrera does a good job carrying the majority of the film. You like her, but the filmmakers do something with her character that makes her a little unreliable. So you like her, but you're like, can I trust you? If the series goes on, I think that this could be a major plot device moving forward. The entire cast deliver good performances. Jack Quaid is particularly fun to watch as Richie, Sam's boyfriend, because he provides the I'm not from around here and you people are crazy for calling a murder town home commentary. You also keep a close eye on him because, as Dewey reminds us, the boyfriend is always the most obvious suspect. The movie is meta. Of course it's meta. It's a scream movie. But it doesn't go over the top with its meta-ness. Yes, characters talk about other horror movies, they know all about the rules, and they're savvy when it comes to the other screams, or, I'm sorry, stab movies. By the way, there are now eight stab movies according to this movie. But the fifth stab movie really derailed that series, one character remarks. This is the fifth scream movie, never mind. The setups for the kills are done quite well, and the kills themselves are carried out with brutality. This ghost face isn't just about stabbing you once or twice. They're going after all the major organs. There's a nicely suspenseful scene in which one character is racing to a location to save another character from imminent gutting, and you think you know how it's going to play out, but then it doesn't. I also felt like the movie did a good job of misdirection when it came to guessing who the killer is, and it continued to make you suspicious of characters right up until the end. My only qualms with the film take place in the third act, and no, it has nothing to do with a verbose, endlessly rambling killer monologue. I did roll my eyes at one point during the monologue. I'll touch on that more during the spoilery section, though. The third act is just kind of messy. Yeah, we get the monologue, but it didn't feel like a full-on dissertation, although it does play out like all the monologues do in these movies. You know, surprise, I'm the killer. I brilliantly orchestrated, manipulated, and sphingolied this entire thing so that all of the pieces would fall perfectly into place in order to lead us to this very moment. 
But now I'm just going to flap my gums until everything invariably unravels and... Oh man, I should have really just shut up and had you dead by now, but... <laughs> you know how it goes. There's just too much going on, and everything felt kind of derivative of the first movie, and not in a homage kind of way, although I think that was the intent, it just doesn't fully land. Overall, I had a great time with Scream 2022. It's a smartly written, well-acted, highly suspenseful whodunit slasher with a good sense of humor that doesn't skimp on the brutality. I highly recommend it. Again, I'm not going to spoil too much here. I'm not going to give away the ending or who lives and who dies, although when it comes to the legacy characters, and yes, one of the legacy characters kind of has to die here. Although it should be pretty obvious which one of the legacy characters' legacies end. I'm sure their demise was intended to up the stakes. It's just who gets staked is obvious. And really it's more of a shish kebabbing than a staking. To me, the kill didn't raise any stakes or make any kind of all bets are off statement. It was sad to see them go, don't get me wrong, but honestly, they probably should have gone long before now. As for the motivation behind it all, brace yourself. Toxic fandom. Seriously. And call me a big softy, but the Four West tribute during the film and at the end of the film got me in the feels. Jeremy actually jumped up out of his seat during the Four West tribute at the end of the movie as if he felt like he needed to stand in order to properly pay respects to the late great director. Let me know your thoughts on Scream 2022 down in the comments section below. And while you're down there, let me know where you think the new Scream movie ranks in the hierarchy of Scream movies. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, and until next time, peace. Thank you to all my patrons and channel members. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and have a say in what content appears on my channel. Join me for monthly live streams and much more. Become a channel member today and get access to exclusive badges and emotes to use when I stream. Both those links are in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.